When you think of the Azores, this view often comes to mind. This is the famous Seta Shadadish on the São Miguel Island in the Portuguese Azores archipelago. Seta Shadadish is in the extreme western part of the island and comprises a volcanic crater and a caldera lake, which we were told you're not allowed to swim in, but we did. The views are spectacular all around. But there is so much more to the São Miguel Island than this, including geysers, hot springs, endless rows of hydrangeas, tropical forest gorges, waterfalls. And so, let's start from its tea plantation. So we are now in one of the tea plantations in the Azores, São Miguel Island. This is one of only two tea plantations in Europe, which I think is fantastic. Not many people know this. Although, obviously, in the country of Georgia as well, there are tea plantations, but some people don't um, class Georgia as Europe. It, some people, why, do, why don't some people class Georgia as, as Europe? I think Georgia is obviously on the sort of border of Asia and Europe, but there are tea plantations in Georgia. However, this is uh, the only sort of European, let's say Western European. But also, Georgia is not the member of the European Union, is it? No. Maybe that's something to, that can have something to do with it? Perhaps. It's, it's actually very mild tasting because sometimes green tea can be quite heavy. Uh, it's beautiful. Is it caffeinated? Uh, no, I don't think it's decaf. <laughs> Cheers. But it's nice to have tea even though it's hot and, and humid, but it's nice to have something warm because we've been drinking a lot of wine the last few days. So, uh, yeah, beautiful forest wrapped peaks all around us and the sun is finally coming out which is a good moment to actually mention that these islands can be cloudy yeah this is a maritime subtropical climate uh, but because it's kind of in the middle of, of, of the Atlantic you know big big cloudy systems sometimes even um, leftovers of hurricanes come this way and yeah there is a lot of cloudy days in the year mm -hmm. on these islands but mm -hmm. it's very warm are looking at us <laughs> and you can obviously purchase teas this box of Cha Verde which is green tea is only one euro fifty that's crazy one euro fifty and you can sample black and green tea for free so you know it's a nice little freebie that you can get in the Azores all you know courtesy of the nice Azorean people <laughs> and I didn't pay you to do this no <laughs> Isn't this just the most perfect view? This is probably tea. Reminds me tea from home. Let's see what our pato has to say about Cha Gorranea in the Azores. Not that I know much about teas. Do you not? Except the teas that I have to spill. Can you spill some tea then? I must spill some tea. <laughs> this reminds me some tea I used to have back home uh, in Rwanda. Mm. Do you have tea plantations in Rwanda? Mm-hmm. I think they actually have in the northern part of Rwanda, wow. where the Virunga are. Amazing. Well, if you look around, this could be mistaken for Rwanda, actually. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, minus this... the ocean. Well, yeah, minus the ocean, obviously. But it's so green and so hot and humid. And so hot and humid. And? And lush. And lush. And they have teas. So they have teas. Exactly. Different types of So teas. let's spill some tea. <laughs> These plants are massive. They're kind of bamboo-y type. And they give this island a super um, exotic and, and, and tropical feel. I love them. And we're just going to Pusu Azul which is a blue lake, a small little blue lake. And I'm looking forward to having a dip because it's hot. So we're now approaching Pusu Azul, <laughs> which is a little lake and a waterfall. That's gonna be interesting. Now we've got a little bridge here Look at this amazing gorge. More like a cave, like a forest cave. Have you seen this forest cave? 
Oh no, there are a few people and I wanted, I wanted privacy. Okay, we'll see. This is what it looks like. Pusu Azul. From... I think we should still go in. Yeah, yeah. Have a little swim. <laughs> No, this is like five degrees, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm coming, I'm coming up. So one of these places that we're visiting today is called Ribeira Calderois. I can't pronounce very well. And it looks like this. Beautiful gorge with amazing fauna and flora and waterfalls. One of the many waterfalls in the Azores here uh, on the São Miguel Island. And just those plants. I want to take them home now. Even hibiscus grows there at the back. So I am enthralled. Beautiful. And these hydrangeas. Amazing. That beautiful tree, and it's hot and humid. So we've just learned that in the Azores, beautiful Azores, you can grab these, one of these, and suck it, and then you get a nice juice, uh, a sweet juice released straight into your mouth. I mean, what more can you want? And look at this beautiful location, full of uh, waterfalls. This is an old water mill and beautiful, beautiful um, flora all around us. This is the Miraduro de Santa Iria on the north side of the island, São Miguel. It's just stunning. These are blue hydrangeas. And I think they actually come in different colors. You can get white ones. Yes. You can get pinky-ish. All the different colors of the rainbow, honey. <laughs> honey. But I think these are my favorite colors. Yeah. just having some corn <clears throat> corn snacks from this town which basically prepares corn under ground so people cook in sort of furnaces underground because that's all you need to cook stuff here and the smell is uh, <sighs> like rotten eggs basically which is interesting because people live smelling that all the time. There you go. That's Pato. <laughs> That's a nice picture. So we're going to try some local water now as well. This one says it's bitter. Uh, some of them taste very rich in iron and, and actually quite gassy. Mm. Interesting. It literally tastes as if it's water with, uh, with gas. Beautiful. Okay. Oh my god, it's like Augazes <laughs> tonic. Yeah. A bit of honey. Yeah. So apparently this water is good for your stomach. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. 
so this tour now has changed or has turned into a, a water tasting tour. Let's try, let's try. Two waters, two little springs next to each other and they taste different. And the marina of Provençal. I'm just imagining how people must have felt. You know, the first people who came here um, and discovered the islands. And they must have just seen those clouds rolling down and the sheer rocks and cliffs and the greenery. It's just beautiful. And this is the uh, beautiful beach of Provençal. Even though it's so stormy and uh, cloudy, it's so hot still. People in Povasau get their bread delivered to the door, which is interesting. Strolling in Povasau, and this is the beautiful Ponta de Madrugada the tip of dawn so you can see the beautiful sunrises here wow just beautiful the whole valley of the uh, Furnash municipalities down there And the smell is beautiful. You get the idea of how big this island actually is. It's uh, São Miguel Island, by the way, and it's actually bigger, a little bigger than Menorca, the Balearic Island. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, look, just look at that drop. Oh, oh this God. is a nice one. I want to take a picture, actually. Let's stop for a second. This is a nice And so, now we are heading down to this... Little jungle bit where I can have a wee. <laughs> I want to explore this little jungle bit. I'm always fascinated by jungles. Especially because... Especially you've never been to one. <laughs> because I've never been to one. <laughs> this and is the one. This is the only one you've been. And because been. of the colours and because of the... Just sense of wilderness that allows you to find a good spot for a wee without issues. These trees must be so old. And hydrangeas everywhere. Oh wow. This is exactly why the Azores are such a fantastic place to hike and so we need to come back here and do proper hikes that this time around we don't have enough time for. All the islands have fantastic hiking trails. This might be a trail I think.
I was just gonna say, it's hard to imagine that this place doesn't have poisonous snakes or dangerous animals because it seems so rich in fauna and flora. But for me, it's good. I don't like snakes, so I quite like this element of safety. But it's just beautiful. It's just the colors are so rich. Uh, plus, it helps with my hangover. <laughs> This is why we put the music, because we have nothing else to say. <laughs> okay, so we are still at the Lagoa uh, de Furnas. Uh, there's a beautiful cafe here. For me, the most fascinating thing here is just the colors, the colors of the lake and, and the smells and the fact that the nature here is unleashed, you know, in its full potential. There's more a hot spring there. Is there? Oh, okay, let's have a look at this one. Wow. The smell. Yeah, this is a beautiful area because... So this is the caldera. So this is the caldera of the Fornash volcano. The actual volcano is located inside the caldera. It's unbelievable. Formed thousands of years ago. We can see smoke popping up because uh, I guess there are geysers or active places wanting to come to the surface. Look, there's a little path down. Actually. Wow, it's like a paradise. This is fascinating. There are bubbles all over the lake because obviously um, the gases are escaping from down beneath. But despite that, we've got mice and birds. So we're now sitting in this beautiful cheese factory actually and a cafe in Villa Franco de Campo, which was the old capital of San Miguel Island, the Azores. And it has a very interesting history because actually in 1522 there was a very violent earthquake here which caused um, landslides and, and a lot of deaths. 5,000 people died, many people were buried alive and because of that event in 1522 they moved the capital to the current place which is Ponta Delgada. But the interesting thing is we actually had a look when was the last earthquake in the Azores in São Miguel and it actually said it was four hours ago. <laughs> so the earthquakes happen here so often that um, we've obviously been here for a few days now and we, we didn't even feel, or it didn't feel like we experienced an earthquake. But yeah, actually the last earthquake was four hours ago. Is it tectonic plate? Uh, yeah, tectonic. because there are different tectonic plates meeting here. Yeah. And I think the main one is the African, the African plate uh, rubbing against the Whichever the other one is, we're gonna have to find we're out. We're gonna have to find out, and we're gonna put it in the uh, description. But yeah, it's 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 fascinating uh, that that was the reason why the capital was moved. Uh, big earthquake of 1522. So the Santa Maria Island is there. I can't see. Yes. So right in the distance, you can see the Santa Maria Island, which, which is, is one of the Azores islands, basically the oldest, the oldest one, and um, it has. And it has what? White sand. I, and it has white sand, yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> there you go. I just found that from Philip. A little piece of information. It's the oldest of the Azores. It's the oldest of the Azores, but you can see how volcanic these islands are. Everything is quite dark. <clears throat> it's beautiful, it has its uh, charm. And even though the weather is grey, it's actually really, really hot. Kind of an impressive heat. Uh, humid, humid heat, but it's lovely.
And just like that, we completed our first ever attempt at vlogging. Yep, that one was the first one. <laughs> we definitely want to come back here and visit the other islands in the archipelago. Flores, Terceira, Pico and Fayal are fantastic for hiking. And if you've seen our other vlogs, you know we love hiking. Please check out our Menorca and our other Azores videos. Comment, like and subscribe as it will help us grow and deliver more content. Thanks for watching and bye.